Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Gloom of Killforth and the Marquis of Pain where we're just about to start episode 5. No big deals from last turn so we're just going to crack on, let's get straight into the daylight phase. And here we are at daybreak on day seven. And we are currently at the Lonely Gorge. And we've got two of our action points. We don't have an enemy there, so we can crack on straight away. So what we're gonna do first? Well, first we're gonna do a regale action because yes, we want to finish Saga chapter one. So Take Fortress, Saga Chapter 1. To complete, we need five gold. So let's get five gold. One, two, three, four, five. Then we've already spent the regale action, so we need a mountain, plains, and enemy keyword. I've moved these over here because that's where I'm keeping the Saga, so I thought it's better to uh, keep them together. And then I know what's what. So we're going to spend the Ravenous Werewolf as an enemy. We're going to spend... The noble woman as a plains card and we're going to spend forge of power as the mountain card so we've paid those we've paid that and that means that we can move on to saga chapter two let me just put the that's a mountain card that's a mountain card and that's a plains card so there are our discard piles so in order to see what chapter two has in store for us we just flick it over the enemy furious at your efforts to rally the people of the lowlands against them send forces to capture you and put an end to your nascent rebellion you must spread the word that the people have hope that they can end the enemy's dominion over their homes that they can stand with you and fight each in their own way after all there is more than one way to make a difference and these people are great craftsmen. Woo! So to complete, we'll need five gold. Well, we still have five left, that's good. A regale action, as normal. And we need the keywords enemy, stranger, and item. Awesome. So we'll put that there. We already have a card with a stranger keyword, which is why I kept the monk. Um, I'd watched One Stop Corp Shops playthrough where he did the Marquis of Pain so that's how I knew I needed the stranger uh, keyword but you've got to take everything you can get so awesome so we've already got the stranger keyword we've already got five gold we need an item and we need an enemy hopefully enemies will be a bit easier to come by because we've been getting virtually any card but enemies right so we've done that is there anything else for us to do well yes because we get an extra hit point. So we've got a hit point back. We don't get the action point with it. You only get the action point when at daybreak the next day. So unfortunately we don't get another action point. And we've got to pick a skill. So there are two level one skills. And they are Hunter, Marshall, Deed, Veil at a mountain location. Veil means you just turn it on its side, yeah. And you can heal one hit point. And we have Price Fighter, which is also a martial card. Deed, Veil, again, you tap it. After you roll dice during a fight test, re-roll each dice showing a one. Well, we're going to keep the Hunter, and you'll see why. So, we'll discard that. The Price Fighter, and we'll keep Hunter. We're going to use the Deed now. Deeds are like free actions, so we're going to go boink, and we're going to heal another hit point. Why? Because we are at the Lonely Gorge, and it's a mountain location. Woohoo! So we're back up to four. That is four out of five, remember, because we did get an extra hit point when we actually sort of leveled up for doing Saga Chapter 1. So we've still got one wound on us. Our full hit points are actually five. Okay, so we've done that. We've tapped Hunter to get an extra 
hit point back and we've still got one action so what are we going to do well we may as well move yeah unfortunately pouring rain is still in effect so what will happen is even though we've got four hit points that i'd normally mean next morning we'd get four action points because obviously you make your action points up to your hit points but we can't go over two because of pouring rain so what we'll do is we'll move and we'll move to excuse me we'll move to verdant fields now we don't have to pick another encounter because the lady emma the cleric is still there she's a stranger so we don't have to battle her or anything we can just ignore her and that is fine so we have moved to verdant fields that's great and that is it for the daylight phase so we may as well make camp we've got no action points left so we're going to make camp and is it in gloom no it isn't so we don't lose a hit point so that's good and uh, that means we can get straight into the night phase and here we are at the night phase so as i said we're not in gloom so we can go straight on to picking a sunny old night card what we're hoping for is another weather card to get rid of pouring rain that would be ideal Whee! god i'm rubbish at shuffling right let's do a cut and see what we get weather yes mind you saying that it's probably some horrendous like weather card howling gale weather revealed place one obstacle at each location for each stranger it has Ooh, so we're at one with an obstacle because she is a we'll just put it there hopefully i will be able to see that so we've got an obstacle there now at the verdant fields have we got any other strangers no we haven't that is it so that's cool so we've got an obstacle there at the verdant fields because the cleric is a stranger map when a stranger enters play place an obstacle or its location right so if we get another stranger come out then that's what we'll have to do the old wood falls into gloom ah, it's over there isn't it right so old wood falls into gloom there we go fortunately that is a forest so we don't get a plot card Woo! that's what we like and that is it isn't it so we can get rid of that horrible pouring rain card goodbye and yes we just have to place obstacles now if we get any strangers coming into play woohoo so we didn't have a hidden token to take off because she didn't hide so that is it for yes that's pretty much it for day and night seven next up is the daylight phase and welcome back to daybreak on day eight one thing i have done is i've moved the monk from over here to over here because this is where i'm keeping my keywords now and he's got the stranger keyword so we need him over here along with the saga okay so it's daybreak on day eight the first thing we check for is the enemies we haven't got any enemies with us we've just got the cleric up there now what else have we got to do yes we've got to give ourselves our action points otherwise we won't be able to do anything so we get those two back and we get an extra two because we're now up to four health so excellent right so what are we going to do today well the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move so we'll spend an action point and we're going to move to the curative font now i don't think we get the three hit points well we'd only get one hit point because that's all that we're missing at the moment i think we've actually got to do a test 
but we're at four hit points at the moment so i'm okay about that we'll just give it a miss if i do get the hit point uh just through passing through let me know but i don't think i do i think i do have to do a test but we're gonna skip that now we don't have to pull an encounter because there's already one there so we're gonna spend another of our action points to move again and we're gonna move here to spire tour so let's have a look at these two cards and move the sander on there so we've got the necropolis now this is an event We've put it onto Spire Tor, and it says each encounter at Spire Tor gains plus two to each attribute. And we've also got to deal with the Seeker of Pain, which is an enemy and a humanoid. And to defeat, you sacrifice one item. So we don't actually use attributes. The Seeker of Pain hasn't got an attribute, and we're sacrificing an item. So we don't have to sacrifice three items. Yeah, we just have to sacrifice one, which is great, because we happen to have an item. So we'll put the necropolis back there. And we're going to get rid of the Seeker of Pain, because we're going to spend the Thunder Hammer. So we're going to go into the necropolis that's there. The Seeker of Pain is building his machines. And we're going to thump him to death with the Thunder Hammer. Unfortunately, the Thunder Hammer will break. So, bummer. We lose the Thunder Hammer, but we also defeat the Seeker of Pain. This becomes a rumour for us. We discard that. It's a man. Oh, no, it's an item. So that goes over here. In that discard pile. This goes into our little keyword pile here. As an enemy. But for defeating it, we do get a loot token. So let's get the loot bag. And what do we get? We get two gold. Awesome. Well, plonk that back over there. We discard the loot token and pick up two gold. So we've got seven gold now, which is great. Because we need another item. <laughs> if we're going to do Saga 2... We've got the stranger keyword, we've got the enemy keyword, we still need the item keyword. We've got five gold, so we've got two gold to spend on an item. Dun, dun. So how are we going to do that? Well, we've got two action points left. In fact, you know what I forgot? First thing we've got to do before that, I was going to sort of move off. We had to engage the enemy straight away and we've done that. But I don't think Necropolis counts as an encounter. Oh yes it does, it's an event. So forget that. I thought I was going to have to pull another encounter. But I don't because uh, Necropolis is an encounter. Or is it? Hang on, I'm going to have to stop and have a think. Because it does say put at the side of the board, doesn't it? I've just put it on there because it's just easier for me. I haven't got too much room. Um, going to have to have a think. Hello, I'm back. Had a think and had a look at the rules. I think that we've actually got to pull an encounter here. Now, the reason is some encounters do have events on them, but this is an encounter. It's a night card, so it's different, I think. The encounter decks are these decks up here, so we have to put, pull another card. This is sort of separate. It's probably why it says keep it to the side of the, uh, of the board. So what we'll do is we'll still keep it on here because I'm struggling for space. But we do have to draw a mountain encounter, I believe. So here's the mountain deck. And we could do something nice, let's be honest. Because uh, we don't want a nasty one. Find cure. So that's one study or three influence. It's a quest assist mountain. Map weakness pious. So if we were pious, we could pass this automatically. But, uh, oh, hang on. She should be on there. The herbs to cure the local lass's affliction lie somewhere in these very mountains. Hmm. So we could, like, she's not going to pass this up, though. She's going to do. Are we going to confront the card? 
because we need an item. I don't think spells are items. Or are they? I'm going to have to check something again. Don't think spells are items. Um, in fact, no, I'll check it now because I always shuffle the decks, don't I? So I'll just have a quick look through. I think they've all got spell on. Yeah, there's no spells with item on, is there? I didn't think there would be. So we'll just give them a quick shuffle. If we ever pick a spell up again, I'll shuffle them again anyway. I always do. So there we go. I just needed to check that. So we need an item. So we could ignore this for the time being. But it's Cassandra. Would she ignore it? Oh, my horrible role-playing. And unoptimal play because... Yeah, she won't leave her. She won't leave some young lass. So, oh, I'll tell you what we do. Just put it here. We'll do it here. And we'll move that across. So what we're going to test on is obviously study because we only need one success. We've got three. Let's put the mountain deck back. We'll get three dice and we've got two got two action points and that was crap I'm wondering whether to spend a fate token no let's keep our fate tokens for something good so we'll just spend our last action point come on let's have a success yes a six so we got the one success we needed we get this card and we'll keep it as a rumor and we'll just take the one gold so We'll put it on this side because it is, a, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll put the skills there and we'll put rumours that we don't need the keyword for yet, we'll put them on this side. So we just get one gold, we're not going to chuck it in for a spell, but that does mean now that we've got, once it's set, we've got eight gold, so that's not too bad. Let's get rid of that. So that took us all of our action points and in fact I probably shouldn't have done that because I forgot Spire Tor is in gloom. Oh! <laughs> Damn it! Oh I've done it now. See it's tough, I've done it. Yes, I've made a bit of a mistake there. I, sh I should have left her really but oh, I should have rolled better. Um, I was planning to go, oh, I was going to Sprawl City anyway, so I'd have probably ended up losing a hit point anyway. I was going to go to Sprawl City to use a market action originally, because we need that item. So, uh, yeah, so whatever. If I stay at Spire Tor and spend it here, I'll still have um, three, I should still have three action points to go into Sprawl City do a market action and come out of Sprawl City. So that's what we'll do next turn, yeah. So um, I don't think we actually lose anything when you think about it. I think anyway I was going to do it, I was going to end up losing one health to the gloom. So we'll do it this way. Right, so that is it for the daylight phase. Let's move into the night phase. And here we are at the night phase. So, first things first, it's gloom, isn't it? Gloom! Yes, we lose a hit point. So, easy come, easy go. And we lose the action point as well. However, we do have, where is it? the hunter uh, card now this refreshed when it became daylight so it is available again it is a deed i believe you can use it in the night phase so we will do yeah and we will get a hit point back that we lost I think it can use it in the night phase. If we can't, just take it that we used it in the daylight phase. I think we can use it in the night phase. So I better check that. Me oh. again. No, it can't. It has to be during the hero phase. So we'll have to do it tomorrow morning. 
Okay, right. Because Spire Tor is a mountain uh, location. So we've lost the hit we've lost the action point, we've lost the hit point, so we're down to three, unfortunately. But um yeah, bit of a blow, and now we do the card. And let's see what we get. Besieged City. Event revealed heroes must pay one gold to move to or from Sprawl City until the end of the next day. You get that's where we wanted to go. <laughs> Damn it! Right, so oh, this is an event. Got to pay one gold to move to or from Sprawl City. So we'll put the card there just to remind us because we'll need to pay one gold tomorrow. We don't have to pay it now, but uh, we will have to pay it tomorrow. So what is that? Barren Wastes. Where are the Barren Wastes? Right up here in the corner. So flick it over to Gloom. Barren Wastes have gone to Gloom. And is that it for that card? I think it is. Okay, so the Barren Wastes have gone to Gloom. We need, we'll need to pay a gold to get back into Sprawl City. Obviously, you've been took over. Perhaps some corrupt lords have taken over the city. And in order for her to get back in and get out again, she's going to have to pay bribes. But that will be tomorrow. So we've got three action points left tomorrow. So what we'll do, we'll go in, we'll pay our gold. We'll then do a market action. We'll use the item deck. You get three of them, we'll pick the cheapest because we're going to have to give it away anyway because we're using it as a keyword. And then we'll come out of the besieged city. Where will we go? We'll either go to the Blessed Grove or the Grand Plains, I think. I don't fancy the Dead Swamp. <laughs> we'll just go to where wherever doesn't have a gloom. In fact, we'll probably go to the Grand Plains because then we can go to the Reaver of Pain. Yeah. So next turn, we've got three action points. First action point, we move into the Besieged City. We don't have to pick up an encounter there because it's Sprawl City. It doesn't have an encounter deck. We pay our gold. And second action, we buy something out of the item deck. We buy the cheapest thing. Then we've got, if, we've, if it only costs two we'll still have five gold. So for our final action, we could do a regale action. No, we won't. We will move. The reason we won't do the regale action is that'd keep us in Sprawl City and we'd lose another hit point. So what we'll do is we'll actually move to the Grand Plains. We'll have an encounter there because it doesn't have an encounter card. And for the turn after that, we're looking to go to the Reaver of Pain that is in the Rolling Hills. And uh, we'll spend a action point to defeat that and get it out of the way uh, we should still have three action points we might be able to um, use our deed while we're there and get um, a hit point back but we'll move to somewhere obviously we'll try and get away from the rolling hills because otherwise we'll lose another hit point because it's in gloom so we'll either come back to the Grand Plains or we'll go to Open Heath or something like that or the Dead Swamp if we have to. Yes, we've got the uh, we've got the makings of a plan for the next couple of turns. Okay, so that is it for episode five of Gloom of Killforth and the Marquis of Pain, and it's gone pretty well. We've managed to get rid of one of the plot cards. The uh, which one was it? It was the Seeker of Pain. Got rid of that. We got some health back because we managed to complete Chapter 1 of the Saga. And we got Hunter. So that allowed us to get some health back. Um, we got some health for actually completing the Saga because we sort of levelled up. Um, we got to Spire Tor. Um, didn't encounter. So we did a quest. Found some herbs for an ailing, uh, an ailing maid. And uh, unfortunately, we've lost a hit point, 
because it's in gloom but that's not too bad i think we'd have lost the hit point anyway because we were planning to go to sprawl city we've lost a bit of tempo really but uh that's role playing for you isn't it and uh yes but not too bad three health three action points i think we're okay we've got the enemy keyword we've got the stranger keyword all we need is that item once we've got that and supposing it's cheap we should have enough gold as well so eventually we'll be able to get to the reaver of pain get rid of him and eventually do a regale action spend all these and we can go on to saga chapter three could just do with a few more action points uh but that was oh this wasn't a stranger was it no quest assist mountain I was just checking, otherwise we'd have had to put an obstacle out um, as, per, as per Howling Gale. Right, that is it. So as I say, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the subscriptions, all the likes and all the dislikes. Thanks for all the input, the help and support. It is much, much appreciated. As ever, if I have made an error, please let me know. I think I caught a couple of things there, but something may have slipped through. And uh, yeah, on things like the Necropolis, I think I'm right there. I think it's a night card, so we did have to pull the mountain location card. I think we did have to do that. But if you could confirm that for me, that would be brilliant. Okay, so that's pretty much... Oh, thank you if you've been across to Board Game Links to watch any of the videos or Board Game Geek to watch the videos on the threads there. Any comments you've made, thank you very much. And any comments you've made down here at um, YouTube as well, fantastic. Thank you. Really do thank you for all the input and the help. Right. That is it for episode 5. I hope you join me for episode 6. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo! <laughs>